This video is going to take a look at some of the expanded tactics in checkers, including how to set up and execute triple jumps. Triple jumps may seem daunting, but they're really just an expansion of double jumps. And just like with double jumps, you'll need to pitch some of your own pieces to pull it off. Let's look at some examples. You likely aren't going to play someone that will just give up a triple jump willy-nilly. For example, you're probably not going to play someone that's just going to give up this piece here. White takes this piece, one, two, and three for the triple jump and the king. Likely what will happen is you will have to pitch at least one piece to execute that. So let's take a look at this. Now again, white will pitch a piece in order to execute that same triple jump. White goes here, red captures, and then white comes down again with the triple jump, one, two, and three with the king. The same can happen on the other side of the board. In this position, white again will pitch, so giving up one piece, and that's okay if it results in multiple jumps. And again, the triple one, two, and three with the king. Here are some more examples in which white gives up a piece to take three. In this position here, white comes up here, red is forced to capture, and then here, White has a choice of capturing either the single or taking the triple here. And of course, the triples we want to take to win the game. One, two, and three for the win. Here's another example. White moves here to force the capture. And then again with the triple. Another example with another piece on the board here. Here, white forces red to capture into this square. And then the triple. One, two, three, and the king, and it's now three pieces to one. Red can still resist a little bit. Red's going to go here, forced. King follows, and then red can go here, the quick capture, or here on the side, and white just follows there, and the game is over. It's a little more advanced, but more times than not, you will have to give up two pieces in order to execute a triple jump. Let's go back to an earlier example. Now here, white pitches this one piece here, and red captures it, and then white gets the triple jump. Let's add another piece to the board and add another element to this. Let's say there's a piece on this square right here, and white has a piece on this square here. Now, white can't pull off that triple jump execution because if white goes here, red's going to capture, white is going to capture back, and now with a backing piece here, red can simply capture back onto this square. So the problem to solve this, white will actually give up this piece, so removing that previous obstacle. So red captures here, now the door is open, white goes there again, Red captures, and then the triple jump, and it's now uh, two to one, and white should win. Here are some more examples of giving up two pieces in order to get a triple jump. Now in this position, sure, white can just, you know, pitch this piece here, red can capture, White can capture back, and then red can go in for a king and probably a draw, but there's actually a win on this board that white can execute a triple jump. So let's have a look at it. Instead, 
white pitches this piece here, the red must take. And now hopefully you can start seeing a pattern of some open holes here. White pitches here next. So that's two now that white has given up. And now pulling off the triple jump one, two, and three. Here are a couple more examples. Now here, again, same thing. It's three against three. Sure, white can just either come up here or pitch here, but again, we want to try uh, to win this, and there is a win on the board. So instead, White pitches this piece here and pitches this piece here. Now it doesn't matter which jump red takes. We'll go over both. If red goes here, white just has one piece left, but it's all it needs to execute the triple jump. One, two, and three, and the game is over. Now, if red takes the other jump, again, it's the same result. And one, two, and three for the triple jump and the game. Another example I'll show here. Now, here is a little bit tricky because it's a little deceptive, but white can actually make uh, one move, and it doesn't matter the direction in which, in which red takes, it's a loss. White goes here. So let's play this out. Let's say red captures here. White pitches this piece again, just down to the, its last one, but it's all it needs. And the triple one, two, and three. Now again, let's say red captures this piece. That's okay. Again, it's the same. And white goes here. Now again, either capture is going to result in the exact same ending. White, red goes there, and then white executes the triple jump. This next position is a little tricky. In the previous examples I showed, white pitched one piece at a time. However, in this case, white gives up a double jump to take a triple jump. Now I know this is going to seem like a mental block for some players, but keep in mind, it's okay to get double jumped if you're getting the same or more pieces in return. So how does white pull this off? Well, let's look. White can't Sure, white can move there, and it's just giving up two pieces for nothing, so that's that's no good. Uh, white can go here, but again, that's just killing time. And same with this, white or red is just going to move up here. So how does white pull this off? Well, white goes here. Now red must take not one, but two. And now we see... All the doors have opened here for white for the triple jump. One, two, and three. Let's look at another example on the other side of the board. And again, the same theme of forcing red to capture. White goes here, again, giving up two pieces, and that's okay. One, two, and then white, one, two, and three with the king. Red really only has one square to go, and that's here, and then white will just follow and capture and win the game. Another mental block may be pitching a piece so your opponent can get a king. 
This may seem completely outrageous, but take a look at, at this example. White is going to pitch this piece here. Red jumps and gets a king. White makes another pitch here. So red jumps. Now white's given up two pieces now. But is going to get a triple jump back and a king. And again, just like the previous example, red can go here and just get captured or just try to run and white follows capture and the win. Giving up three pieces to take three can also happen and it takes some creativity to pull it off. These are some more advanced problems, but it's worth showing a couple examples to see how it can be done. Here we are toward the beginning of the game, and this is actually a more common trap than you might think. White pitches three pieces to take three and should ultimately win the game. So how is this done? Well, the first pitch is here. So red's now on this square and white has given up a piece. Now, white's going to give up another piece here. So now white is down two pieces. And finally, white is going to move here. And hopefully you can start seeing, again, the doors open, the holes in place for white to execute a triple jump. Red captures here, and then white goes in one, two, three. Not all triple jumps in the opening are a bad thing. In fact, sometimes they're necessary in order to draw. I'm going to show you a very popular line from Strickland's Cross that requires a triple jump sequence. Let's play it out. Good development. Allowing red to capture the key double corner square here. White is going to try to give problems for red by moving in here next. And now to start the triple jump sequence. Red goes here, so no matter what next, it's going to have to take this piece. And white's going to allow that. White comes up here. Red captures the square. White goes here next, seeing the door is open, captures there, and again, white doesn't want to go here because that just is the double jump, so instead, white goes here, here, and here for the triple jump, but red gets this piece back, and yes, white has a small advantage in this position, but it is a draw. The tactical element I like to introduce next is called breaches. I'm sure many of you have encountered this either on the losing end or winning end, but it involves a king moving in between two pieces to capture one of them in the next move. So here is a prime example. Red has two pieces that are separated by one square here, and the white king is just going to move in between them. Now, no matter what, in the next move, white is going to capture one of these two pieces, whichever one you don't move. So it can be really useful when either trying to draw late in a game or even trying to win. So in this case, red is just, you know, thinking they had a win, but now going to just try to draw by going into the double corner and will eventually get a king and draw the game. It's also very valuable if you want to try to wrap up a game as quickly as possible, and here's another example of that. Sure, this is probably a draw, but there may be a little bit of a liability here with this white piece, so instead white is going to give it up to form the breaches, and now white is just going to slip in between these two pieces, and uh, it's a draw. Red can try going here, but red cannot corner white, uh, no matter what happens here. So again, it's a solid draw.
Here's another example in which white can pull off a win. Red is trying to advance up the board here and already has a king here, but white is going to focus on this vulnerable piece on this square right here. So white is going to force red into this square, force it again. Again, its only path is here. And now the breaches. Now, no matter where red moves, it's going to lose a piece and we'll be down two against one and we'll lose the game. As you play more and more, you'll begin to see a lot of these tactical themes in your games. Triple jumps are difficult to see and don't be concerned if you can't see them right away. Viewing them as an expansion of double jumps will help and so will practice. Here's one last one for good measure. White goes here, red captures, and one, two, three for the triple jump. Thank you, as always, for watching.